Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsan Zavall, and in this video we're going to have a look at a new add-on that is going to totally revolutionise the way that you do panel lines. So this add-on is called Just Panels from Gabe, and you can find this in Blender Market. There is a link in the description for the video, and it is an affiliate link. And I'll be perfectly honest with that straight up, you will be supporting the channel if you do buy this. So if you are going to do that, that's really appreciated. But watch the video, see if you think it's worth it or not. It is $15. I mean, in the UK at the moment, with inflation, that's the price of about two pints. So that's well worth it for me. But you have a look at the video and see what you think. So I'm going to look through this add-on in a relatively logical order, going with the more basic functions of the add-on first. If you want to skip to the bit that's got me really excited about this, just go to the chapters and look for the bit that says the exciting bit, and you can check that out straight away, and then you can always come back and have a look at the other bits if you choose to. So we've got something that we want to cut some panel lines, and I'm going to press Shift and A, and I'm going to bring in a cube, something like that. It could be any shape, and then I'm just going to put it there. So it's intersecting with the object that I want to have the panel lines on, and then all you do is shift click the other object to select it, press N and you've got this panel here called Just Panels once you've installed this add-on. And all you do is click Make Panel and it makes, well, a panel line. And you can fiddle around with it if you just click on the original object here, it comes up with this and you can change things like the size of the gap, or the bevel size, or how many segments the bevel's got, whatever you want to do. So. It's really quick and easy for you to do that. You can even fiddle around with a bevel profile to make it less pointed or even inverted. So it's really quite fun to use. Now, if I just undo that, the other thing that it works off of is it can work off a 2D object as well. So if I just bring in something like a panel, scale that up and then bring that there, then you've got the same option, but this time you shift select the object that you want to slice into and you click the make panel 2D. And there we go, we've got our 2D panel. But what's even cooler about this is this time it now has, if I click on the object that's being the cutter, it's got these 2D properties. So I can start affecting the depth as well. And you can still fiddle around with all the other settings, for example, playing around with the size of the gap. So when Gabe showed me this, I was pretty excited, as you can imagine, but then it sort of fell down a little bit because if you notice, it's got this cut in here and then it's got the same at the top which means that effectively, if I apply all for this and then just hide this to get it out of the way, you'll notice that this section here, if we go into vertex mode, A, P, and by loose parts, this bit is actually loose. It's not attached in any way. So this is not very useful for creating anything like 3D printable panel lines because it's going to make just as much work as if I was to do this manually. Well, not quite, but similar. So as I said, Gabe went away and then he came up with this and you'll notice that it's got a make panel 3D printable option. And to be honest, even if you don't do 3D printing, I think you're gonna end up using this more often than the other ones. And the reason for that is it just gives you way more control over the things that you're gonna want control with. So same thing, shift select the object that you want to have the panel lines in and click and you've got your panel lines. And what's really cool about this is it's automatically 3D printable. But what I think is more fun than just that fact by itself is you get way more settings and you get to do all the other things that you could do. But, and this is where it gets really cool, you can start fiddling around with your depth. So if you just go to panel depth here, you can make it deeper or less deep. You've still got all your other options as well, but now you've got more gap options. So for example, if I look at this from the top, you can see that my square was or my cube was originally here. So everything's being contained inside it but I could change that so that my gap on the outside actually goes further, so half a millimeter further, and my gap on my inside is now where my cube originally was. So you can move things around as much as you want, and you can make this gap really wide or really small, and it works perfectly. You can also change your bevel size, either on the inside or the outside or both, you can change your number of segments on the inside. Let's put that to 10 and then on the outside, same thing. You've just got so much option in terms of your customizability. It's absolutely amazing. Now, what gets even cooler than this is if I bring in another cube and then bring that over here, is that it starts doing things when you have an edge of an object to play with as well. So if I do this, you'll notice that I've got my panel depth fairly deep there. But if I bring it out to something like there, oh, I just realized I haven't applied scale to this. 
So let's just undo that and then apply the scale and try that again. You'll notice that what it does is it actually bevels the inside section as well so that it makes everything looking a bit smoother and again we can change that so that's got our bevel segment here and we can change that to be bigger or non-existent as well if you bring it down to zero you can up the segments you can up the profile of it as well just like you could do with all of the other things and you can make that bigger or smaller so as i said there is just so much customizability with this and what's more important is if i come here and click apply all you will see that we've got a 3d printable object with no issues no non-manifold edges nothing like that that's going to cause us a problem so i mean this is brilliant so let's finally go through the other bit that is really exciting about this which puts other add-ons to shame in fact i can't really think of any other add-ons maybe hard ops you could argue that you could do something like this with but it's definitely not going to be as user friendly as this is it's going to have a lot of problems with a lot of things that we've done but if i just bring in a cube here and then i shift and d and bring in another cube there now notice i've spent no time trying to make sure these are the same height or fiddling around with these like you would do if you want to do this manually and if you want to have a look at how to do this manually there is a link in the top right hand corner and it's in the description i've done a video on in fact two videos on panel lines and they're not easy and quick to do but click our two objects and select them and then select our thing that we want to have the panel lines on click make panels and we've got our panel lines and what's really cool and this is the bit that really is exciting they intersect perfectly you've got no screwing up geometry no problems we can still come into each individual one for example if i don't want these to have a bevel to them if i want them to be sharp I could put that to zero and that to zero and then come to this one and do exactly the same thing. So we can fiddle around with this as much as we want, but you'll notice they are exactly the same depth and this will work perfectly fine for 3D printing without any issues at all. I mean, you just can't do that that quickly with anything. Now there is one trick to this that I do want to mention because it sort of messed me up to begin with and I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of it. If I press Shift and A and bring in a cube, let's scale that up and say I want to do an interesting shape, something a bit more than this. So let's go into face mode. I'm going to E to extrude that out and then I'm going to E to extrude that one as well. So we've got a more interesting shape going on, something that might be more fun for a panel line. Now, depending on your workflow for 3D modeling, it might be that at this point you are tempted to start fiddling around with the bevels here on each of these corners to make it the way that you want. Now, the way this add-on works is that it wants you really to do this as part of the add-on. I'm gonna shift and D and bring this to the side and I'll talk about that again in a second. But you'll notice that what you do is you go through the same process and it automatically adds those bevels on and I can just come in here I should say you can press Alt and K to get up your menu as well if you want everything there. I've just been keeping the end panel open. I think it's a bit tidier, but that's my sort of choice on that. And I don't like these pop-ups that pop up in the middle of anywhere. And you can still change all your bevels and it will change the bevel everywhere, which is really, really useful. So we could change our bevel on the inside and notice this feels like it's the outside, but it's the inside of the object. And then you can do the same on the outside as well. So you can change the size of your bevels however you choose to. But what if you don't want that? What if you want different size bevels? And this is where the trick comes in that I want you to be aware of. So let's say I select these edges. Notice not the inside one. Control and B and I make my bevel to be whatever I want. Let's say something fairly large there, but I want this one to be smaller. Something like that. Now, this is where the trick comes in because it's going to look like this doesn't work for a second. So if I select and then make 3D panel, you'll notice it's disappeared as if it hasn't worked. Now, it has worked. And if I come back down to where that's selected here, you've got all of your options. And all you need to do is make sure that your bevel size on the inside and the outside is set to zero and then it will work. Effectively, what's happening is if you think about the original shape that was here, in fact, let's go all the way back so we can see this. If I was to start adding a bevel modifier, so add modifier and then bevel and change this limit method to none, 
you'll notice that it would start having a problem on these edges here. So you can see that it's doing some weird stuff. And if I change the amount without the clamp overlap, this is effectively what's happening. It's breaking its own shape. This is why it doesn't work straight away without you changing those options. So there we go, make panel. Again, we can't see it, select on the panel, and then we just change our inside and outside to zero, which means it's exactly the way your original shape is. So you can decide you want to have something where you decide you're gonna use the benefits of the add-on itself, or you might just want to make this custom shape that's gonna work perfectly for you. Now, depending on what you want, this might be something you're more likely to do than this. And if that is the case, that's not a problem. What's useful about this add-on is if you go to edit preferences, come to your add-ons and go to the just panel add-on and click down, you can change all of these default options for each of the different settings. So if you hold your mouse over, that's the bevel on the inside. I could change that to zero automatically. That's the bevel on the outside. I could change it to zero automatically. Click here and save your preferences. And then now, if you do the same thing, so let's bring in a cube. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. So extrude there and extrude there, and then go into edge mode, and then just change those bevels to be large, change this bevel to be small. And now if we use this, you'll notice it works straight away because we've changed the default settings for what this cube's gonna do, which means you can also change the default setting for how deep this is gonna be. For example, for me, pretty much always, because I know my 3D printer, I will set the bevel depth to being 0.8 millimeters, and I could also change the size of the gap. So there we go, that is the Just Panel add-on. Tell me what you think about it. I think this is absolutely brilliant, and I am going to do a video in the future exploring a project using this a little bit more so you can see just what we're likely to do with it. So do let me know what you think in the comments section. If you found this video useful, give the video a like, and as always, if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel for more great content. Have a great day, guys.